Bam! <laughs> well, if all goes well, that will all show up in the world. Right. And uh, I'm going to put our nomenclature up so people know who we are. Look at that. Hey, look at that. What's that? That's this way. I was just pointing at the uh, logo, just trying to get my <laughs> angles right. So anyway, um, I'm very excited for one fact that this is live, and this is the first time. We tried it once before, and for some reason it got screwed up, but it looks like we're okay here today. So is my audio got, okay? Uh, yeah, it's great. So All right, let's we got, do it. We got Devin back, and uh, of course there's my old self. And our focus in conversation today is, it's been done before, I ain't going to lie, but it's not, not been done with us, exactly right. We are here to really throw it out there and shed some light on what's real and what's not. Best five body weight exercises a person could do. Now, I thought about this a lot. So when we say the best, the best for what? <laughs> what are you thinking? I think that thinking about our list, the best for, I always think in terms of strength. Because strength is the most transferable and usable form of any output. So I would say it's the best for strength. Because if you say it's the best for strength, that means it's the best for I use the buzzword longevity um, and general well-being of quality of life. The stronger you are, the better quality everything is. I think. Man, every time I talk to you, I feel bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> my my goal is to shame everybody into. You know, it's like I trying know, to be stronger. Can I use the old man card again? Uh oh, that's great. I, that's what I, that's I what use I it all you. the time. It's like uh, I'm just not the man I once was. And uh, it's unfortunate, and I, I'm coming clean. I'm saying it. Yeah. But uh, at 70, I just don't have the horsepower I had when I was, what, you, how old are you now, 38, 35? 36, yeah. 36. I always say I'm almost 40, and I get so much backlash for it, so I'll just say 36. Do you, do you, know, do you know my son is 37? Uh, is this the one that you were telling me? That was, he was in, in the Navy, right? No, he was in the, he was in the Army, Special Ops. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's so young. Man. That's so yeah. Young. Yeah. He, he got out yeah. after 15 years. Something like that. Respect. Mad respect. Yeah. So, guys don't um, get nearly enough. Five exercises, and I'm not going to list them, but you and I know which ones that we, we kind of decided on. Yeah. And so, uh, do you want to pick it up from the bottom or you want to pick it up from the top? Let's go from the top. Uh, I like going from the bottom. <laughs> okay, so uh, of, of the of the five that we decided on, mm -hmm. um, on the bottom of our list of five, where did you find? And we may not may not agree on this, but it's, that's okay. It's it's a free country. What did you find to be so the yeah, bottom of the list, but needed to be on the list? I'll put, uh, I put on there push-ups. Needed they have to be on the list. You, that's the least. That's number five. Yeah, I didn't, you know, and I'm a huge fan of pressing, bench press, push-ups, shoulder press, any form of pressing I love. But I don't know if it's the best out of the five that we came up with. And, and I, I put an emphasis on the hand release version of the push-up because it sort of guarantees the larger range of motion, right? If you take your hands off the ground, for those people who don't know what a hand release push-up is, you're guaranteed the full we call peck to deck range for the movement. And in order to strengthen your muscles, you have to lengthen them. So if you're just dealing with body weight only, there it is, look at that, beautiful. So she's got her hands up there. So you get a little bit of rear delt contraction, which is nice, keeps the shoulders open. Um, but the hand release forces you to go all the way down. So you're getting uh, a I, good- I, Again, I don't, I don't disagree with yeah. any of that. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't have put it on the bottom of the list. Quite frankly, I put it on the okay. top of the list. Yeah, and that, that's where I think, that's why I like our conversations. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I respect your, your opinion on this. Um, now, I will say that if I had a pick between two, well, let's not go there yet, because um, 
I, I would I might I might retract my statement when we go to what I think is number two or one on the list for real. Uh, I see where you're going, yeah. But so here's what I think about the push-up, especially the hand release push-up. As you suggested, it's it's assuring that you're gonna get full range of motion. Yeah. Right? There's no cheating. You know, you see these people pumping out these push-ups and their backs are in they're 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 going into um, uh, they're getting uh, hyperlordotic, their back is just, their, their lower body from the waist down hasn't moved and their shoulders are doing this. And they're just basically yeah, just lay on the ground and pump your arms, right? Yeah, um, we call that the, uh, like the chicken peck where sort of their <laughs> chest and traps are going up and down, but nothing else. Yeah, well, so, you know, obviously enough, that, that wouldn't fall into my list of the way to do it. Um, yeah. But when you're in a push-up position, you're engaging from toes to hands. So I agree. Yeah, the plank act aspect of it is good for just structural integrity. It, en it engages everything. Your spine is involved. Uh, your core is involved. Um, your shoulder girdle. Everything right down to your toes is, is engaged. So um, and th the ease of function. So the other consideration is, is it easy to get to, easy to do, um, which puts it on the list. And you could pop down and knock out some push-ups, and that's going to be a good thing for you. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, I, 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 I just don't know. I definitely agree with you on the – it's probably the most, uh, like, from, from couch to hero type of thing. I, th I agree with you. It's the most accessible out of the list we have because, like, you can take any numb nuts off the couch who doesn't do anything and say, lay on the floor, get off the floor within some reason. When I used to, uh, back in the day when I owned my club, I used to teach spinning classes. And I would teach classes uh, like four days a week. Mm -hmm. And I would get the people that were going to take my class and bring them off onto the deck somewhere, some open space, make everyone get on the ground and do 300 push-ups. During the spin class? so like Before if, the if, spin if, class. Oh, you're a pioneer then. Well, the idea was um, not to just get stuck in the rut of just getting your cardio piece and go. So, and uh, yeah. obviously enough, not everybody can do 300 push-ups in one sitting. It takes time. So yeah. we, we started out doing sets of 50. And, uh, you know, some people would fall out after 100. But, yeah, um, but you know, you know what I found is that uh, I was getting over 1,000 push-ups a week. Uh, yeah, and you know what ended up happening? I started having problems with my shoulder. My wrist was starting to go on me. Uh, it was just a little more than I should have been doing. But, um, you know, and you know what? My, can I tell you something? My wife does 100 push-ups a day. What? She, yeah, and she's, she's 56 years old. You know, Get her on here. She's shaming me like there's no tomorrow. You know. Whoa. I know. It's sad. All right, so we we – have differing opinions on what would be the bottom of the list. Let yeah. me give you the bottom of the list for me. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, I, I got to remember what I what I said here. Let me just go. Give me a sec. Let me just peek. And of them, um, I would say the split squat. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that was my second to last one on the list. I'm gonna well now, now listen. I like the split squat uh, rather than just doing an air squat. When you're doing a split squat, you're getting a lot of load um, on your quadriceps. You're getting in your glutes. Um, you're getting more engagement than you do if you just do a traditional air squat. Now the air yeah. squat will jack your heart rate up, no question. Yeah, you can um, cram in more work in less time with an air squat. Yeah. Thing. Now if you do it if you do it well, you alternate legs. You know. Maybe pump out about uh, a minute worth on one leg, flip legs, minute worth on the other leg. And again, just for those that are trying to figure what we're saying, I, I threw it up there real quick. Let me just do it one more time. So now this is a Bulgarian split, split squat because she's got her foot up on a ledge. Yeah, whenever I, uh, whenever I say write program for my classes or athletes, I always – I say split squat, but I, I – uh, I insinuate the Bulgarian split squat. You know, I always assume that would elevate the back foot. Well, and that you know what you do is you get a lot more engagement on the anterior chain. So mm -hmm. you're working on your psoas muscles. 
uh, you're you're getting a lot more engagement in the glutes. Uh, yeah. It's um, now um, um, obviously we're not talking about this yet, but I'm a I'm a fan of deadlifts. Yeah. And I like single leg deadlifts. You're getting um, fancy now. Well, I just um, do you know who Mike Boyle is? Uh uh Educate Mike Boyle is a strength and conditioning coach on the East Coast. He's internationally recognized, works a lot with uh, NFL, a lot of people in pro sports. And uh, I listened to him one day, and he, he just kind of shed light on the idea that um, when you do a split squat uh, under load, you put 60% of the work in your legs and only 40% in your spine. And when yeah. you do a traditional double leg squat, it's the other way around. All the loads in your back and less of it's in your glutes and your legs. So yeah, from the standpoint of generating more work that's functional work, I like a split squat. Yeah, I agree with you, especially for people that are a little bit more advanced when it comes to the gym. They've been training for more than, I would say advanced. If you if you got a little more than three years in the, in the weight room, um, at least for me, I've seen more strength and power increase over time squatting less split squatting and lunging more however my traditional squats back squat front squat will go up without training those movements specifically but incorporating more split squats uh -huh. so if I, if I don't touch my back squat in a year but i'm consistently split squatting which i do um you know if i retest my say my back squat in a few months from now having enough touch back squat is going to go up every time and I could totally see why. Um, yeah. So what was it on the list? And it occurred to me after the fact, and I didn't want to, you know, I just wanted to get this thing rolled out. So to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't have a lot of pushback. But when I was starting to think about split squats and lower body stuff, something that should have been on the list that it didn't get on the list is doing just uh, step ups. Oh, um, yeah. You know? Yeah. It, I had that on my, uh, my, I would call it my junk list, the ones that are kind of related but not. I think in our messages, I put on their stairs as a good one. Um, yeah. But, you know, not – I guess I kind of scratched that because it's almost like you would have to find stairs so, sort of thing. And we were thinking more along the lines of, like, what's most effective. Let's just say you live in a box. you got no equipment. What can you do? Not everybody's got stairs or a box. You know, when, uh, when Hunter put out this – I don't know if you recall, but he did this thing called the OCR Stars. It sounds familiar. Is that it was a, kind of it was a competition old, but where uh, yeah. actually what he did the second time he did it twice. The second time he did it, he gave the person that won a car. <laughs> oh, okay, I saw that. It was a lot of track kind of stuff. I saw. Really, seeing, like, no, no, you had to you had to run a mile for time, uh, and uh, a bunch of other things. But one of the things that he did as a training was uh, he called it "Step Over Forever." Mm -hmm. So you step the, up, up with and the dumbbell. Over. Huh? Was that with a dumbbell or a weight vest or something? No, no, no. It was just step onto the box, over the box, onto the box, over the box. And um, I forgot how many repetitions it was, but it ended up being about, they figured it out to be about 1,600 feet of elevation gain. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And Very so, um, we, you know, actually guys that I work with that are doing mountain races, the OCR World Championships is going to be in Mammoth this year. And... You know, there, it's going to be a, a steep climb, and you know there's going to be a lot of it that's going to be power hiked because the guys aren't going to be able to run; it'll be too steep to run. Uh, yeah. And so I put them on step mills. As a matter of fact, I've got a guy doing ki the Killington Ultra Boost this weekend, and uh, I put him uh, with a 50 pound vest on a step mill for an hour. Yeah, that's a, that's some skinny boy stuff there, but it's tough. Well, the point is, is that um, stepping is huge for developing your lower body strength and your core strength. Yeah. You know, I I agree and I like those because in, in my in my mind, looking at this from an inside the gym standpoint, all that single leg stuff has so much benefit. Yeah, it's just the the amount of power you can generate and be able to put out if you train single leg properly is like. Just well, so, so the problem, the pro, you know, because of my running thing, I'm always looking at compensations, right? When, when you tend to have an issue on one side, yeah. you favor. 
and then you start, you know, you, you're running around on one leg predominantly, even going up a set of stairs. I could tell you just in my own accord, uh, I have issues on my left side. I have nerve damage. And when I go up the stairs, I always lead with my right foot, I always lead with my right foot because my left leg's le it's weak. Uh, and so alternating onto a step like that is going to help to create some synergy, some balance. Uh, so I like that. But, you know, the same thing applies to the to split squats. When you're, or even, you know, also on the list is the lunges. So, and we haven't got there yet. But anyway, so um, bottom of the list for me, unfortunately, based on all this gobbledygook we just had, was the split squat. <laughs> Split squat. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So let's go to four. Did we go four? Uh, well, for me, four was the split squat. So we were we were pretty close on that. You had it the last one, and I had the second to last one. All right. Let me just re refresh my memory and see what I. Uh, the only the only reason I I would say the split squat is probably my personal favorite exercise, but the only reason I'm going to say it's towards the bottom on this list is. It's probably, and, I, and I'm emphasizing the Bulgarian version that you showed, the elevated leg. It's probably more of an advanced lift if you're going to load it, if you're going to load it, right? A lot of people that I start training can't always perform the split squat right off the bat. It requires a lot of uh, stability too. And sometimes I get newbies in the gym and get that rear leg elevated and they can't even stay still. So... Again, it's towards the bottom because, in my opinion, it's more of an advanced form well, I, of some I, of the other ones we have on here. Yeah, I think that what we basically did, and I think it's just intuitive, is that we separated the upper body from the lower body. We wanted to have a little something going on for the yeah. lower body, a little something going on for the upper body. <laughs> and I felt that because of the body weight, you know, leaving external load off the table, uh, mm -hmm. you're not quite going to check the boxes that you really want to check on the lower body uh, as much yeah. as you could with your upper body because obviously enough on the list is pull-ups. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to just jump to it and say it because I'm all over the map anyway. That was my number one uh, strength move. Pull-ups. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's big boy stuff or big girl stuff, I should say. Yeah. Uh, because if you can master your your body weight in your grip i knew you were going to go with the grip <laughs> well it the, the grip is big i mean if you look at the studies and research they look at it as is a, a method of determining mortality how long you're going to live yeah and yeah. so we were just talking about that in the gym the other day yeah yeah so uh it's important um but just you know really engaging the entire body i mean Again, it's almost like a core exercise in that once you engage like that, your TFL, everything goes off to support your, 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 your while you're going to work and your lats and your biceps and your rhomboids. Um, so uh, it's big. And you know what? If you, if you just go down the street and get a room full of people, you'd be, you know, you're lucky to get one out of 20 that can actually do five pull-ups. Yeah. What I like about that too uh – you know, talking about the, your mortality and all that stuff, obviously we know that the, the more capacity you have when it comes to your heart rate, you're generally healthier. But we'll go to the advanced version. Dudes or girls that can do volume on, on strict pull-ups, that will jack up your heart rate like crazy. And I don't think people give that strict pull-up enough credit because it's not something you typically do for the pure reason of heart rate, right, getting your heart rate up. But anyone listening who's – banged out a set of 15 to 25, 30 strict pull-ups, that'll smoke you, man. I know I've done a max set of pull-ups, and I'm, my heart rate's up there for a few minutes afterwards. Well, I believe you. But the, the caveat to that is you, in order to get that holy grail, you got to be able to put the volume in. Exactly. And, and so that's a problem. You know what the best cardio exercise in the world is? Let me – I'll give you my opinion on that. Yeah. I would go with swimming. Nope. What do you think it is? It's not what I think. I know. Or or, or wrestling. <laughs> nope. What you got? S skipping rope. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I... Now, but the the reason I bring it up is because the problem is the sustainability. Now you talk about getting a good cardio you, cause, workout because you 
Yeah, because you can't sustain that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, most people yeah. can't. If you said, okay, I'm going to go 15 minutes on the rope hard. Yeah, who? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, that's I that's rough. I used to do a lot of uh, rope skipping in my day. Okay. I used to use it in intervals when I trained in the gym. I would go, like I had a big swim clock, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And I'd go, I'd go double unders for a minute, and then do an exercise. Double unders for a minute, do an exercise. You didn't know oh, yeah. this about me, but there was a time in my life where I was kind of strong. I was, you know. You gotta. One, the next time we get on here, I, I want you to prepare like a little pop up window. Just randomly throw them in there of like old shirtless photos of you getting jacked in your gym up here. Just plop it up there. I don't think I have any. I don't think I. Oh. I have some images of me uh, doing a triathlon, but. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, you because you were before before the bathroom selfie era. Yeah. No, but I listen. I got somewhere there. You know, we used to race in speedos. You know, that was that was old school. We, you you race in a speedo, right? And uh, so I, I did the yeah, I did like, the Bass uh, like Lake Classic. Mark Allen over here. <laughs> I did the Bass Lake Classic, which was a big deal competition back in the day. Um, I th I want to go back to 1986. I think it was. I was um, negative one. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you're from California. You've been there. So it's it's like uh, Bass Lake is up, you know, yeah. it's up in the mountains. Right? Oh, I've been. Yeah. And I got in the water. You know, I just came from Hawaii. So I didn't know about wetsuits. Yeah. You know, I showed up, um, you know, at the, when I swim in the lake there, right, Bass Lake. It was snowing, dude. It's, dude, it's cold. <laughs> it was snowing. I'm sitting there in my speedo, and I'm trying to put like Vaseline on my skin and stuff before I get in the water to try to insulate. And uh, on that bike ride through the mountains, and the, the air was probably about 45 degrees, whipping down those mountain passes. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's a that's a story for another day. But um, yeah, that's all I got though. I've got a picture of me doing that. Um, well, next next time, let's put those up there. You you bring a couple, and I'll bring a couple. I've got some old triathlon photos you know when i was about that big <laughs> it's no well you know, you're, traditional you're triathlon, not triathlon skinny physique. anymore you put a ton of muscle uh, on man if if i if somebody paid me a large amount to go do an iron man again i'd say keep your money it's too much weight to take take on that right now and be be fast you could do it but you know what's difference at race, lately, racing and enduring lately guys have been going for that Guys are coming out of the woodwork. All of a sudden, they're they're doing the Ironman challenge. Yeah, I agree. A lot of them too are coming from the strength world too, where they're coming they're from all over in. the place. Yeah, there's that you know, there's that big movement. You know, you're in the middle of it. Probably more than I see it is the whole hybrid thing. I'm a hybrid athlete, and I can do Dude, this at 200 pounds. Chris Roglowski uh, did an Ironman. She did that. It's called the Starvation um, Ironman. Uh, it's yeah. in Utah. It was put on by the um, the um, Iron Cowboy. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the, I don't know if you heard the podcast, but he talked about there's a cutoff. If you don't make the cutoff by whatever the time was, you got a white shirt, white T-shirt. That's your that's your prize. If you don't make the cutoff. If you don't make the cutoff, you get a white T-shirt. If you make the if you finish the race, you get a black T-shirt. That's it. Well, is, was the cutoff like a traditional Ironman where there's checkpoints, or was it the whole race? There was a checkpoint you know? um, when you get when you get off the bike. If you don't have enough time to finish the the run, okay, so like regular Ironman, yeah. And well, the the point of the matter was it it was uh, the climb. I think went to eleven thousand feet elevation. Okay. And the the on the bike it was like the whole bike <laughs> ride was climbing. My point is, hundred. Do you? Uh, well, let me give you an example. Hunter did it. Took him seventeen hours. Well, that's, I mean, in the grand scheme of Ironman, that's slow. But you got to credit the, uh, that's, the elevation. Well, he went to Copenhagen, and ran a ten, a ten uh, twenty-five, I think it was. Uh, two okay. weeks later, three weeks later. For open division, that's pretty good. So he can, you know, he's, you know, we had a bet. We bet a bottle of scotch. Uh, I said he wasn't going to break eleven hours uh, when he did it in Arizona. <laughs> Yeah, and he uh, he ended up with uh, ten fifty six something like that. What rate? That was Ironman Arizona. Yeah, so he's done three. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, Ironman Arizona's that's the last Ironman I did. That's a nice. 
I would say a flat course too. It's yeah, flat. yeah it is, it's an easier course. But where I was going with this is Chris Rogalowski came in um, either right be right in front of or right behind a hunter on that on that crazy uh, starvation Ironman. Just keep What's it third your, place. Um, all right, I got in a I got in an online bickering match with this guy who runs obstacle racing media about oh about chris about chris i don't uh I, i'm trying to pull it up here on my phone but anyway the whole thing was matt try, i guess so dark hair guy i don't know yeah okay i think i had commented from red lines instagram there was something posted to the effect of chris ruglowski being more versatile I, I think that was the term used of an athlete than rich Froning. I don't even remember what I said, but it was something to the effect of I disagreed with that. And then I chimed in and saying maybe somebody along the, the likes of Hunter McIntyre would be more well-rounded than this Chris Bull. What's your thought? Well, I hate to tell you this, but I think I agree with him. Because I don't... Is she... Well, here's here was my... Now I'm getting a little more to remember it's awesome. I don't know her personally. I'm just going off the internet, just like any other internet. I'm an internet troll like the next guy when it comes to this type of stuff. When I think of as a coach and someone who programs competitions and workouts and for athletes on a daily basis, when I hear the word or see the word versatile, I'm going to take into consideration not only versatile within your world of endurance racing, right? If you've done an ultra or a Spartan beast and High rocks, to me, those are all endurance category. What I would like to know is what's her raw strength like? Because that's going to come into play when well, it comes to, so, to so as you were, I knew you were going to say this, and as you were saying it, I was thinking that um, the deficit that Froning has in my mind is polar opposite of the deficit she has relative to Froning. So... Uh, she has a far greater capacity to do enduring events than Froning will ever have. But at the same token, she has nowhere near the strength relative yeah. to mass that he has. So, and that's where think... that's where I chimed in on on. Uh, and I know we keep tooting his horn, uh, an athlete like Hunter. Where let's split the difference. My argument was, you know, I think Rich Rich has credit due where his credit's due, and so does someone like Chris. But if we were talking pure versatility, which I think this guy was, uh, I don't know. who's In your eyes, having worked with both of them, who's more versatile, her, her or Hunter? Hunter. Yeah, that was my, that was my conclusion, too. Having, well, I don't know so, either one of them personally. So, like I said, I'm an internet troll like the next one. You know, one. for anybody listening, just to be clear, my opinion's founded on having done diagnostics on both of them. So, um, right. Chris, that's why. Yeah. That's, so yeah. I've worked with Chris. That's, that's why I thought. Yeah. I worked, <laughs> with, I worked with Chris and I, she has a tremendous uh, aerobic capacity. Um, she does not run out of gas. She just does not run out of gas. But, you know, having worked with her and the day that I did diagnostics on her, and I tested her not only on the treadmill, I tested her on uh, skier, I tested her on rower, I took <laughs> her out for a 10K run. I, I, I put her in the pain cave on the run, which yeah. she never visits. So there there's a – she governs her work. So she doesn't have this, this high gear. So high gear in anaerobic cap capacity and or does she have the type of raw strength? For example, if you were going to have her do a, um, a squat or a deadlift or something like that just to yeah. measure her – She's not going to be anywhere near. Um, well, let's let's give it a different light. Look at somebody like uh, Lauren Weeks, right? Yeah. If she got into a competition with Lauren Weeks to do deadlifts and squats or any kind of barbell or, d or dumbbell exercises. She's yeah. she's not going to hold up. And, and I guess that's where that's where my uh, trolling fun began with this obstacle race media guy was. The obstacle racing community is so honed in on this idea of what's, and this is where you and I always talk, end up this conversation of the idea of what strength and power is, is 
not quite there yet in the obstacle racing community. You know. No, well, uh, you know, and I don't think it's going yeah. in that direction. I, I, I really don't think. Um, Probably not. Yeah. You know, well, Spartan is basically shit the bed. They're now they're <laughs> now they're all they're doing is trying to see if they can get an Olympic, you know, yeah. berth. And uh, oh, jeez. They're 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 adjusting all their events to favor the short distances. They've actually even put in like a laser pistol. So they can get into like a pentathlon kind of a situation, um, and so it's just, it's really lost. In my opinion, it's lost its way, because I respected what they were doing when it was like, you know, old school. You know, up Tahoe, run up the mountain, weather was yeah. shit, windy, yeah. snow, whatever. It was grit. You know, that's yeah. tough stuff. Just Car carrying a Home Depot bucket of rocks up the mountain once or twice. Yeah, yeah. well, now old school. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've never done one. I kind of wish I had. I kind of wish they were doing this kind of thing, you know, back in my day because I think I would have done pretty well with it. Yeah. Because I wasn't. I was kind of Hunter esque in the respect that um, I wasn't the fastest guy, but I had pretty good endurance. I've run marathons. I've done triathlons. That kind of thing. Um, but I was stronger, you know, so I used say to you, like, had, you I, had, you I, had the, uh, the strength going for you. I used to like to tell people that my goal is to run 10 miles and bring the fight. You know, yeah. when I show up 10 miles later, I could still fight. You know, a lot of these guys, they could, they could run 20 miles, but they have no fight in them, even from the gate. You know? So yeah. just from a standpoint of, you talk about longevity, survival, you know, what can you bring? And so I, I think I would have done okay with it. But anyway, we're off point. We got <laughs> um I went with I went with the pull ups as my number one. Okay. I would go with uh, number two would be um the push ups. Okay. Now now this is unfortunate because now I'm favoring upper body and that's not me, right? <laughs> so and then the third yeah. thing would be the run. Right now. Oh, I didn't I, even have run in there. Yeah. Well, I know I, I erased it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so look at the, the thing about the run, right? Um, you, you had suggested like, if you could knock out 20 pull-ups, your cardio is going to be on point. I'm saying that you take an average person, give them five exercises to do. They're not going to get 20. They're not going to get their cardio out of their pull-ups. Right. So the cardio, in my opinion now, it's not about trying to run 10 miles, even for an hour or whatever, but some interval-based running where you throw it down. I'm, and, and I would, by the way, the exercises we're talking about, they would be the workout. It wouldn't be like one thing's one day, one thing's the next day. No, I'm yeah. saying you might start out like uh, run 250 meters, 400 meters, something like that. Get your heart rate jacked up. Come back. Um, maybe go into the split squats, you know, because you've been working your legs. Pop off the split squats, go into the pull-up bar, get the pull-ups, go out and run again, drop down, do the push-ups, um, and, you know, kind of follow that interval-based fashion. Yeah. But I think the run's a, a, a critical component of the process because, you know, when we're talking about fitness longevity, the cardio is a big wow. deal. You've you got to have that. I mean – and we talked about this the other day. It's like strength is huge. You know, if you don't, you can have all the cardio in the world, but if you can't get out of your own way strength wise, you got a problem, right? Yeah. 100%. So, what did we leave off the table? I feel like that was run, split squat, <clears throat> push. You hit, the air, you hit the air squat. My, on the top of my list was just the basic uh, body weight lunges. But I think. That's kind of covered under the umbrella, in my opinion, of the split, squat. split squats, the running world, that whole thing. Yeah, single leg, single leg work. I think we should have. But I, I put the lunges. Step up should have been in there. Yeah. Now the more I look at this, yeah, because I've got my top two are lower body, right? I've got the first one is my lunges, and then your, your squat. Uh, I'm super biased to lunges, though. I think that's the greatest exercise known to me. Well, the problem the problem with the lunges is that I think you get to a place where you do need external load. Yeah. 
the only way around that, and I don't even think there's a way around it, but if if you want if you could make them more challenging, you would have to you would have to incorporate the eccentric tempo to those lunges. Slow. But then again, yeah, slow. Then, then again, you're you're limited by range of motion. It's the same every time, and, and then that's where the split squat comes into play. Um, but yeah, it, you, lunges are are great, but you're I think you're right. You do they're they're greater when you load them. You know, the, this guy. My favorite came, thing to do, actually. Uh, this this guy that came to see see me uh, from Mexico City. He's he's a trainer. He's got his own place there. He's in great shape. Um, and <laughs> I saw a video he posted where he got into a deep lunge where mm -hmm. his uh, trailing knee was not touching the ground, but maybe an inch off the ground. And he sat there for 90 seconds. So like a static hold? Yeah. So try, yeah, like try, you know, you're talking about eccentric loading. He got down into that position and held it. And then you alternate to the other side and do the same. I don't think I could. I, well, I know I couldn't possibly do that. Yeah, we do the uh, a variation of something like that all the time at Redline here. Uh, one of my favorite power strength building exercises is a loaded lunge, deficit lunge, let's call any variation of that. And then you'll superset it with something like what you're talking about, right? Like an eccentric body weight or static hold of some sort with a pause at the bottom. Well, you take a loaded lunge or loaded single leg anything, and you superset or go right into a body weight, eccentric, static, anything of that capacity, bro, you're going to get so strong. It's like, if you're not doing that, you're not getting strong. <laughs> nice. You know, by the way, I just now pulled up this little comment thing, and we got somebody throwing a hand up. I actually know the guy, Daniel Weiss. This guy lives okay. in, uh, this guy lives in, uh, he's, if he's still listening, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Daniel. He lives in uh, Slovenia or Slovakia or someplace like that. Nice. Yeah, someplace hey, out in Europe. I was, uh, the last time I was in Europe on a cruise, he goes, oh, cool. That's not that far. I'll, I'll drive out to meet you on the boat. You know, and it's like <laughs> a, about a seven-hour drive. <laughs> yeah, there he is. No, there he just said it. Slovakia. He's from Slovakia. What's his, what's his name again? Daniel Weiss. Um, let me see if I can put, it, oh, Daniel, put him up yeah. here. Can I put him up here? Yeah, there he goes. What's up, Daniel? Get his little face up here for a second. Daniel is... Performance into, optimized. He's into nutrition. He's a runner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he is. I got him right here. Yeah. I see him bang, banging out some strict pull-ups on Instagram. Yeah. Well, he's all about it. So um, thank you for coming, cool. Daniel. You're... Yeah, man. First, first episode of a live event, and you showed up for it. That's awesome. Heck yeah, dude. Major props. I like okay, Daniel. So he's, out, he's putting if, stuff out there. If we line it up, um, run it down. After this conversation, top to bottom, what's five for you? The the last one. I got. I'll go for from you. the top down. Yeah. yeah. The top down. Lunges for me, number one. Second one, squat. Uh, third one, I've got the strict pull-up. The fourth one, split squat, Bulgarian, elevated, rear leg. And the last one is the, the hand release push-up. That was my top-down, ride-or-die body weight exercises. Okay, now that you had them five in a row, how mm -hmm. would you put it together if it was a workout? In a, ooh, I like this question. Okay, uh... First thing I would do is put it in an interval. I love intervals because if you're training alone, you you can't push yourself as much as you could if there wasn't a clock to it, in my opinion, at least for me. So I would go every three minutes um, to keep it, keep it on the hypertrophy train here. Let's hit 30 lunges, 10 strict pull-ups, and uh, 20 hand release push-ups every – Three minutes, six, seven rounds. Okay, so we let off again. So it's every three minutes you're doing how many exercises? Just one or three or five? All three in all three in the three minute window. So the clock's going. You're gonna hit thirty lunges, ten strict pull ups, and twenty hand release push ups. So thirty, ten, twenty. 
Okay. You get all that done. Let's say it takes you two minutes to get it done. You get a minute of rest. Congratulations. And then do it again. You got two more exercises. Oh, you want me to put all five in a workout? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, all right, let's first, let's say you do five rounds of that. It's 15 minutes. Let's do another 15 minutes. Then you would separate the uh, air squat and the uh, split squat. I would do the split squat as your primary load, primary strength movement, eight on each side. Superset that with eight eccentric bodyweight squats every four minutes, three rounds. That way you're just going pure hypertrophy on the lower body. Since the first part there, we kind of smoked the upper body with the pulling and pushing on the pull-ups and release push-ups. So, so um, it is one workout, but I would, I would separate them a little bit. Because I like to have the capacity to sort of overload volume on a muscle group without you know, sort of playing grab ass with 20 workouts in, in one set. Well, my, my uh, variation would be it'd be time-based. Okay. I like time-based simply because it gives you an easy opportunity to see your progression. So, like, for example, if we're, I, let's start with, start with the Bulgarian squ uh, split squat. So we alternate legs, and we go two minutes. So minute on one leg, minute on the other leg, go straight into a run. And uh, because you love running so much, let's, let's, call it, uh, <laughs> let's call it 500 meters, okay? So out 250, that's, back to – That's an endurance, that's an endurance <laughs> run. <laughs> out 250, back 250. And then go straight into the pull-ups, and your timeline is you got to do uh, AMRAP as many reps as you can do in two minutes. Okay, come off that and go um, right into the uh, the hand release push-ups. Same thing, uh, as many reps as you can do in two minutes. Um, maybe at that point in time give you like a 30 second break yeah and then uh what's left um squats the split yeah, squat? squats uh, just no, the the lunge, body weight no squat. i did the lunges split squat so yeah i would do the split squats um and then i would do the same same uh timeline as the bulgarian lunges one minute off each leg and then toss that run back in there so um Okay. You're gonna and, and let's see, let's just because I like to go. Um, I'd probably want to go four rounds. It's very. Uh, I like it. It's very triathlon of you because I'm, I'm hearing this and my legs are, are feeling the brick workout. Right, <laughs> get off the bike and go run. <laughs> well, well, you know what? I, I like functional exercise. No, that's great. I, I, agree I like with this. you to you know engage a lot. So I the days of isolated movement patterns like bodybuilders do. That's been off my radar for so long, I can't even tell you. Yeah. So it just makes me want to puke when I when I see people throw in like like uh, you know delt laterals. You know, going to hit the front, going to hit the middle, going to hit the back. You know, um, you know, go the, the quad extensions, hamstring curls, calf raises, leg press, all of that to try to get strength in their legs. Yeah. There's just no harm. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that kind of stuff. I, I I personally do it, but I don't do that as like this is my workout. It's almost all, always as a superset. Like let's use your rear delt thing, your rear delt fly as the example. It's always going to be like a superset to a, a bigger lift, like a strict press or something like that. And for me, it's more along the lines of keeping the joints and tendons healthy versus like this is my workout. Look at my delts, you know. Well, what you're doing is pre-exhausting. Yeah, and I, th those smaller movements should never, in my opinion, they should never be done first. You got to hit the big stuff first, like what you're talking about. And then, if there's reason to do it, or the science will back the progress on this, then you can add in the hamstring curls. But no, unless you're like at such advanced level of body bodybuilding or powerlifting, nobody needs to be doing hamstring curls. Well, Just deadlift. The, the, the pro again, I, I kind of invoked the term functional uh, earlier. And I just find that yeah, when yeah. when you get into these isolated movement patterns like that, you you run the risk of developing imbalances. 
and you're going to end yes. up going, you're going to go with body parts that really resonate with you. Like, uh, I, I used to love to get on a quad machine and just do, you know, leg extensions. Oh, yeah. You know, burn like crazy. It's so, so great. And then just sit there for a second, let the lactate clear out a bit, hit it again. And, and then my hamstrings were shit, right? <laughs> so my hamstrings were non-existent and I had these quads, right? Um, and then you and then so, you get knee problems. Well, no, that's my point. It's like you start to develop imbalances. And yeah. so I like functional movement patterns. I, and this is kind of why I'm keen on body weight is because it's all functional. I mean, every bit of it is engaging your body as a, as at large. You're yeah. not, you're not like, you know, um, preferring an area of your body and, you know, you're really getting off on the fact your delts are starting to pop. So you want, you want to do a whole bunch of overhead presses. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but I, I like the body weight. So, um, cool. I, I, when I read this back, I'm going to see what your workout looked like and my workout looked like. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to post it. The next time we oh, do like this that. thing, I'm going to put it on a, I'm going to put it on a PDF. I'm going to put it on a link and I'm going to put it on this thing so that if, if somebody wants it, we'll download it to them. Right. I like and it. They, I like and they it. can have it for, yeah. for freebies. All right. What have we do not it. touched that you want to touch before we put a fork in this thing? I want to know your least favorite, what you think is the dumbest exercise out there you see people doing. Wow. Um, God, there's, I know I got one. <laughs> um, there's got to be something well, you've no, seen so this you week. Got, you realize it, you, got, you got to define it. So like there's a lot of exercises that I don't like but I don't like them for the athletes that I train. So, okay. I'm give me an about... example. And you, you don't have to name any names. Give me an example. Let's say somebody that you've trained or worked with, or that is the archetype of somebody you would train or work with. You see him on social media doing X in the gym and you're like, what are you doing that for? What's Bench that press. exercise? Okay. And that's specific right. to the type of athlete that you work with. Well, yeah. So in, can I tell you something? I work with NFL players. I've worked with pro pro athletes and they're always worried about their bench press. Like, why? It's like, when are you ever going to lay on your back? And if you lay on your back and you're pushing something off you, you're already on the ground and somebody's on top of you, right? Yeah. You've already lost. So uh, let's focus on power off the legs. Let's focus off push. Okay. I'm okay with push. Um, but I want function movement patterns. I don't like a bench press. I certainly don't like a bench press for an OCR Fair athlete. Enough. Or even a high rocks athlete. I'm thinking, I look at time, time is value, right? How much time do you have in your day to train? And how much time have you wasted doing things that don't, don't pay the rent? You know, like bicep yeah. curls, tricep extensions, these isolated movement patterns. It looks great in a t-shirt. It does not pay the bills, right? If, if, I would, uh, I was, I'm laughing because I was going to say, don't tell Hunter you don't think biceps win races. I've told him a million times. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of a joke, but, I, you know, trust me when I tell you, he knows better than that. <laughs> uh, um, it, it's just, uh, I just, I, we don't have time, right? You know, I, by the way, it's funny. I got to show this to you, right? I, you know, I coach clients virtually. Like we're sitting here right now, you're my client. Mm -hmm. I'm going through your workouts you're going to do this week. I'm looking at what you did last week. And I, I see these holes in the week. They didn't do shit all week. And I'm like, why? Well, you know, I really haven't had the time. I said, you know what? We're going to sit here and talk for almost an hour. That's an hour you had. I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put this sign in the window next to your <laughs> phone. This is I'll be back in 55 minutes. And I'll wait Not for long. you. So you, you, if you've got time to sit and bullshit with me, you got 55 minutes to go out and get some work done. I said, just hang the, I, you know, not engaged at the moment sign. <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find time. You find time. But on that note, it's like if your time is limited, you know, you're trying to get to work on time, you know, whatever it might be, um, doing exercises that aren't going to just go straight towards making you better at what you're trying to be, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I don't like wasted movement. Fair enough. Now, that's in your world, it's different. 
Yeah, I, we just literally, right before we got on this, we filmed the video of uh, myself and the coaches were testing one of the Nashville Fit Games workouts. It's got a high volume of bench press. And the first thing I thought of when I finished testing the workout was, for all these OCR athletes coming to the Fit Games this year, if they are not bench pressing, they're in big trouble for this workout. Well, you know, I had, this, I had this conversation with one of my clients in California. He's signing up for your, for your race. All right. Or for your event. And yeah. uh, I warned him. <laughs> I warned him. I said, let me tell you something, brother. I said, this ain't going to be no joke. I, and I made him pull it up. I said, look at it. I said, if you've got to do a bench press, you know, that's got to that's got to start showing up in our workouts. Right. Yeah. Because. But again, and that's specific to this event. Well, you know. he's training for. So, again, I'm about functional exercise. If you tell me this is in the event, then it's going to be in your training. Right. Um, right, because that's functional for the event. If it's not, in, if event, it's not yeah. in the event, then it's not in your training. I'm not wasting time. Yeah, it's just the way it works. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Good talk. Good talk. I. Uh, you man. I always enjoy it. So likewise, we're gonna go back likewise. and do this again, and we're gonna talk about loaded exercises. You're the pro. You know. Let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we're gonna same thing. We're gonna do it this. Now that we've kind of done this, we could think it through a little bit clearer. Five exercises that must do. Let's just say you're on an island and you, you're not going to get access to anything else. You got, you get whatever weight program you want to be on, whatever, you know, equipment you need, it's there, but nothing else. But for those five exercises, I can't what are they going to be? And then what is the workout going to look like? Perfect. Let's do it next week. All right, bro. I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Cheers. See you, homie. Bye. Thanks, everybody.